Now this doesn't always happen, but for this video I'm crediting an idea from the comments. Back when I did 442 Soccer I remarked that chances were pretty good that you could score a goal, put a controller down and then just sit back and watch as the computer failed to score, because that happened for like a good minute or so. But a fan of the channel remarked that hey, why not try this with other footy games? It would be fun to see what happens. And you know what? He was right. So it's time for a little test. How long does it take for the computer to score in a football game without any input from me whatsoever? It seems obvious what should happen, the computer should just go straight up the field and score immediately. But well, you don't know do you? Scoring a goal might be dependent on my own errors, not to mention the AI itself just making the proper passes and so on, it's kind of a complex thing to program. It's also a good way to see how a game plays footy, and it might reveal other problems with the game that you wouldn't necessarily uncover. One important thing to note though is that if the computer happens to take a long time to score it doesn't necessarily mean that the game in question is bad. Indeed it might mean that its AI is actually quite complex and that it works with you. If a game's more of a simulator I would expect it to take longer. If it's more arcade based I would expect the player to basically be on their own and for goals to happen very quickly. It's kind of a case by case thing. Anyway I have a bunch of football games here, some classics, some obscurities, some old, some new, some bad, and I'm going to test 30 of them. For each game we'll use the default settings and two good comparable teams. Well I've seen as a lot of footy games measure game time at different speeds, not to mention the difference in speeds between machines and so on, we'll use real time for the tests. Are you ready then? <laughs> well let's go. First up some older games. My expectation here is that these will be quite fast because the AI is probably going to be simple and straightforward. So we'll see. First up my favourite footy game of the lot, Sensible Soccer. No missing, long ball straight up the field, keeper fumbles, CPU scores and gets the job done in 9.5 seconds. The time's not a surprise, Sensi plays so fast and is very biased towards attacking. It's an arcade style footy game so if you're not controlling the players well, they aren't really doing a lot. Add lousy keepers into the mix and this is what you get. Next up Sensi's great rival, Kickoff 2. Now this took a lot longer, Kickoff 2 eventually managed it in a minute 42. But this test showed a lot of differences in how the games play. KO is that bit slower, there's more passing in the build up, and the AI actually prefers to cross the ball. Sometimes a recipient isn't there which means the CPU crosses and then the same player picks up the ball. There's other things too, computer controlled players on your team do actually work at getting the ball back, they can even tackle. Which did result in one slightly silly moment where a CPU player got hurt and no other CPU player came forward to grab the ball. The keepers in KO2 are a lot stronger than Sensi's as well. Funny thing is KO2 does look a bit more like real football in this test than Sensi does, showing I suppose that Sensi never aimed to be a realistic football game. How about a couple of 80s computer games next? Match Day 2 on the Specky and Micropro Soccer on the C64. Much like Sensi, Micropro Soccer goes by in a flash, a mere 5.52 seconds goes by between kickoff and the goal, there's no protection whatsoever. Match day 2 is a bit more drawn out at 53.18, although a lot of that has to do with the game being considerably slower. Still the keeper did manage a couple of saves. Lastly there's a couple of arcade ones. Tekkan World Cup is again super fast, just 13.23 until the goal. It's the same as Sensi and Micropros. Fighting soccer is a bit more like kickoff too. The players who you aren't controlling are at least trying to get into positions, the goalie's very strong and the finishing isn't that clinical, and so it takes a minute or two for the ball to get in the net. Finally in this slot, football champ lasts a full 1 minute 36, which is mainly down to the strength of the keepers. So what can we take from these games? Well the line of influence from Tekkan to Micropros to Sensi is very obvious. You can see the philosophy where they believe that you should pretty much just survive on your own wits and if you don't try then you'll get scored against very quickly and frequently. The other games are a bit slow and help you out a little bit more. It's interesting to see Kickoff 2 in action more than anything. The way it plays perhaps makes me think it's a lot smarter a simulator than I've usually given it credit for, seeing as I've always been a Sensi fan. But in the end they are both very different games and Few things make that clearer than simply not playing them, as weird as that sounds. What about the 16 bits then? I would perhaps expect to see the AI get better and for it to take longer on the whole for goals to happen, and I sort of got that although not necessarily for good reasons. This is also the first time that FIFA and ISS enter the fray in their original forms, how do they compare? Well FIFA 95 lasts a long time, in fact a whole 3 minutes and 53 seconds. How come? Few reasons, 
Firstly, keepers in old FIFA are very strong and it takes a great shot to get past them. Secondly, if you're not doing anything, it takes a surprisingly long time for the opponent to get the ball off you. They slowly shimmy up to you before finally going in for a charge. This actually makes stopping for a bit a worthwhile tactic in the game. You can easily kill a couple of seconds and pick out a pass while waiting for the CPU to tackle you. Also, the CPU's shot choice is very specific. It seemingly always goes for a quick square pass and shot outside the area. A few are saved until finally, one works near the end of the first half. ISS Deluxe took even longer. In fact, it took 10 minutes and 6 seconds. Why? Well, because of something I didn't expect. When my keeper grabbed the ball for the first time, I decided to not do a damn thing. And so he didn't. And surprisingly, I didn't get any comeback from that, and the game clock just kept going down until it reached zero, and I thought, well, I should just kick it out. All this actually does is prolong the game. All the time spent with the keeper on the ball gets added to the injury time, but it is rather flawed seeing as it basically kills the game. A human opponent could potentially stop it by tackling the keeper, but this will result in an automatic red card. So, um, yeah, that's quite a big cheat. Take that time out, and I suppose it took around four and a half minutes for a goal to happen. Once again, keepers are good and it takes a while for a chance to form. Most goals in this game are scored by rebounds and eventually that's what happened here. The actual longest really was the worst 16-bit game I chose, Bloody Pele for the Mega Drive. This one was just embarrassing. Not just for the poor quality of the attacks, but for how inept the CPU is at getting the ball back from a stationary opponent. Seriously, just look at this. Half the time they just end up fouling you anyway. Add to this robotic keepers that save basically everything, and you have an ugly game of footy. The ordeal finally ended at 9 minutes 38. After ISS, I decided that for the most part I should at least kick a dead ball back into play, and honestly I think this only ended because I was releasing it so quickly that ultimately, the goal was left wide open. Otherwise I have serious doubts as to whether the CPU would have scored at all. The rest were fairly unremarkable. More arcade games like Fever Pitch Soccer and European Club Soccer once again left humans to their own devices. They were designed for the CPU to get pretty close in before shooting too, meaning that goals happened at 1760 and 1011 respectively. The arcade game here, Super Sidekicks, also went by quickly. Your keeper barely ever holds onto the ball for a shot, and so it took just 31 seconds for the ball to go in. Ultimate Soccer was the one strange one. Surprisingly, for a very sensi esque game, it took a minute 31. I mostly put this down to how weird the ball moves. It's very light and it kind of just goes everywhere, but ultimately it went on target. As games get more complex, we gradually start to see more issues with the AI, Pele obviously being the prime example. As far as a simulation of football goes, FIFA 95 probably looked the best, although there are still strange fins about it. The AI does struggle for a bit when faced with a totally inactive player before finally deciding that tackling is the best option. I suppose it's built more on reacting to the moves that you make, and so not making any confuses it somewhat. ISS Deluxe is much the same way. The result is a slower and more realistic game, which is what I'm expecting to see more of as we go into the 32-bit generation. The PS1 games I tried on the whole were fairly unremarkable. Olympic soccer was the quickest by far. In typical crazy style, the ball goes straight upfield, is headed once, and then twice. A huge looping header over the keeper for a goal in 9-12. Olympic soccer is a game where you can easily score from the halfway line if you want, and should be considered an outlier. Other games such as World League Soccer 99 are pretty laborious, taking a minute and 50. Often it's just a matter of waiting for the computer to cross the ball. Seeing as there's no control, there's no stopping a free, close-range header that's usually a goal. It's a similar story with Actuous Soccer 3, although a bit faster at a minute and 19. I was expecting a lengthy stretch from three lines, a game where it is notoriously hard for either yourself or the CPU to score due to the awful shooting and robot keepers, but thanks to a lucky positioning that made it easy for the CPU to just tackle the defender and stick the ball into the net, it's done in a minute 25. So what of the big two? Well, FIFA 98 did something that to this point I'd not seen in the game before. When the keeper got the ball, I left the controls as I occasionally do if the clock's still running, and this time the game punished me for delay of game, resulting in a free kick on the edge of the area. I've not seen this in the game before, and I've not seen another game use this approach to combating such delaying tactics. Said free kick contributes heavily to the goal, which happens in 5063. 
ISS Pro isn't far behind. Although it's a slower game than FIFA, there's no stopping a delicate little chip and goal in 5810. While both these games go faster than most of the also runs, there's clearly a few fins at work. The positioning from your team's AI is better, and there's even some rudimentary shielding as the AI tries to protect the ball from the attacker despite your total lack of input. Slowly, football games are becoming more simmy and looking like they do now. Still, the big test here is obviously 442 soccer. We're going to put what I said to the test. After 11 seconds, the CPU has its first opportunity. Saved. 10 seconds later, the keeper throws out. Another opportunity. Saved again. There's six opportunities in the first two minute half, all of which go the exact same way. Shot from the edge of the area. Easy save. No goal. Seven more opportunities happen in the second half, and aside from this one scary moment, they all go the exact same way. Shot from the edge. Easy save. Finally, with 10 seconds to go, Patrice Loco of France gets the ball from the throwout. 442 Soccer has one last shot, and there it is. At the 14th time of asking, with no input from me whatsoever, and 8 seconds on the clock, the computer has scored. It just about avoids becoming the only game so far where the CPU simply didn't score at all. In just about the smallest way possible, it's won. On then to the PS2, where we have a whole mix of results. The quickest game this time around was This Is Football 2005, in 1519. While the CPU does try to get in defensive positions, there is still a wide open space in the middle, and so the opponent scores with their first shot. UEFA Challenge, one of Gremlin's final titles, is also pretty speedy, done in 3365. It may look like I'm controlling the defender here, but honestly I'm not. It's trying desperately to track back as standard, giving you a reasonable amount of help. Still, I'd obviously need to take control to have any hope of stopping the goal. Sensi is also back in the form of its 2006 edition. The game is similar to the one of old, although the attacking isn't quite as strong. We do see some silly shot choices. Also some freakish teleportation. Still, they get close and score in 5446. And similarly to the old PS1 games, club football relies on a free header from a corner to get the job done in a minute 04. What about the big two? We've got FIFA 2002 here, along with good old Pro Evo 4. And the two games are never closer. Both do the job in 1 minute 17, with FIFA 2 5 tenths of a second longer. FIFA is becoming more protective. We're now seeing the defending AI get really close to attackers and actually win the ball a fair deal. Still, once a defender gets the ball in the area, I can't do anything and it's not difficult for the CPU to tackle and slot in a close range opportunity. Pro Evo 4's AI also tries a little, opting for decent positions and even doing a little one in with the ball without guidance. But once again a corner proves to be lethal. The attacking in Pro Evo 4 is however a ton more varied than any other game we've seen so far. As for the Wooden Spoon Award, well that goes to Virtua Pro Football, Sega's complete rip-off of Pro Evolution Soccer. The game takes 3 minutes and 56 seconds to score, but not for any good reason. The attack is just toothless. Like Pele, sometimes the CPU just fouls me for no reason when trying to take the ball. Once they even manage to run the ball out of play despite not being in any way challenged. It's kind of silly, really. But as has often been the case, a cross finally allows for the free header that mercifully ends the process. What we've seen for the most part is the gradual evolution of teammates AI. In the beginning, the rest of your team just didn't do anything. Slowly but surely, they started to occupy their own zones, something that at least means that when control does switch to that player, they start in a fairly decent position that gives you a chance at the attacker. Gradually, we've seen them do more, automatically track back, get closer to attackers, even intercept the ball at some points. These are all things that usually you're not supposed to notice in-game, but when you don't play, you can see them at work. Obviously, we should see even more as we get closer to the modern day. But seeing as after the PS2 era we only have two games left, we may as well just skip to the here and now. And so let's look at Pro Evo Soccer 2017 and FIFA 17. In Pro Evo 2017, lots has changed. Defenders now move with attackers a lot more, and they move laterally to them, blocking them off. They get in the way even without your input. There's even one point here where a cross, once so lethal, is actually defended. The attacking play has also changed somewhat. Usually we've just seen teams bomb straight forward, but Pro Evo takes its time even when the defender in front of them isn't doing anything. You'll notice how little space there is in the area generally. Even without your control, players still fill the box and make life difficult for the attackers. But despite all of that, 
it doesn't take long. The ball gets to Neymar in the area, and really when he's got it here, it doesn't matter if I'm controlling or not. The game scores in a minute 07. Neymar is, well, he's Neymar, and he doesn't care about my experiment or how good the AI's defending is supposed to be. Ultimately, Pro Evo 2017 gives the same result as most every other Konami football game we've tried out. And so, FIFA 17. A game where defending yourself can often be a pain and is hard as hell to learn. Maybe not playing's a better idea. I've chosen to play against Germany, a pretty strong attacking team, against France, who are of a similar level. The game starts and... Well, just look at some of this. Put simply, FIFA 17 is a defensive machine. The defence will do anything. Crosses come in, not only will they defend them, they'll clear them. Attackers head in for goal, the AI defence will track them and when they get the opportunity, they'll tackle. They'll intercept passes a lot of the time. The keeper will pounce on any ball that goes astray and generally they'll just be a nuisance. The system is on the whole very polished. Germany are reduced to only a few opportunities. Not because their attacking is bad, but because the defence is harassing them, closing them down, intercepting passes, blocking and even tackling without any input from me whatsoever. The only thing I'm doing is kicking the ball back into play with the keeper, and he's pretty good as well. I mean look, here's the stats at the end of the first half. A couple of strange things. In a game where I wasn't playing, Germany had 56% of possession and France had 44. Surely you would expect that gap to be much wider? You can see the two tackles too, which happened completely off my team's own accord. And we have a stat of 54% for pass accuracy. Where did that come from? At what point did my team actually pass a ball? I can see a couple of examples perhaps, but still, geez. Substitution for the second half goes in similar fashion. The AI defence in FIFA is just that good. For most people, it's actually way better than trying to defend the goal yourself. It can be used in other ways, such as letting the defence harass the attacking team on their own, while you control a midfielder and close down the attack from behind. That can be very effective. Finally, in the 68th in-game minute and after 13 minutes and 2 seconds of real time, Germany score. And they still had to work at it, finally producing a pass that split the defence and allowed a clear scoring opportunity. The most modern game on the list took by far the longest to produce a goal. The question with FIFA 17 really is, you know, is it all just too much help? If it's more effective to just let the CPU defend for you than it is to try and do it yourself, can that really be called a good thing? It's something that a lot of people complain about playing against online. It's pretty hard for a regular player to break this sort of defence down, and it seems to go against EA's attempts to position FIFA as a major eSport to have a defensive system that needs barely any input from you. Still, it certainly produced an interesting result at the end of the experiment. Shows how far we've come. So what have we learned? Well, let's have a look at some stats, shall we? On the whole, I spent a little over an hour watching the computer score against a defence that consisted purely of its own teammate AI. The shortest time it took for a game to score was Micropro Soccer with a mere 5.52 seconds, and the longest was FIFA 17 at 13 minutes 2 seconds. I have a chart here. The games have been sorted chronologically. Kind of interesting to see them all laid out like this, I'm sure you'll agree. Now this whole idea naturally started out as a bit of fun, although it actually did turn a little bit technical towards the end. At first my natural thought was that surely if the computer took a long time to score, that that would be a bad thing, as it meant that the CPU's attacking wasn't competent. And in some cases, such as 442 Soccer, Pele and Virtua Pro Football, that was pretty much correct. But then I started thinking about the other side too, the one that you don't often see talked about much in football games. What we have here is a demonstration of how teammate AI has evolved, or how AI in general has evolved even. It's always been there to some degree and not playing the game definitely shows it off. You don't think about it because you automatically think that if you're not doing anything then nothing's going on, but in truth things do have to happen. In the early days it was just a matter of positioning, making sure that the rest of the players you're not controlling stay in something that's recognisably a formation, dependent on where the ball is on the pitch. In something like Sensi or Kickoff, every computer controlled player has a zone that they're in until the human control switches to them, and if they weren't in that zone, then the play would suffer because we would take control of them and they wouldn't be in a position to affect the play. For most games in the 8 to 16 bit eras, that's usually the case, just get in a good position. It's not something you'd notice at all when playing, but you would definitely notice it if it wasn't implemented. As games get more modern, they start to do a bit more. You gradually start to see things like automatic shielding, or players behaving like they would in a normal game. 
Maybe they'll force the opposition out wide, or they'll start to fill the box. Of course, a lot of what your teammates AI is doing is also dependent on what you're doing. They've also got to get themselves in positions where once you get the ball, you can make passes to them and whatnot. And so if you're not doing anything well, things are liable to go a bit wonky. But still, they tend to get closer to the action rather than just staying in a specific zone. And then, yeah, you eventually end up with something like FIFA 17, one where it's certainly something to see just how much the AI has evolved after all that's gone before, to the point where, as mentioned, it might just be a little too much. I mean, it's not that a player doesn't know what to expect out of a largely AI-controlled defence, it's that they're so good that you really struggle to do anything against it. And that's before a player makes changes to the AI's behaviour. If I'd switched them to defensive, perhaps the opposing CPU wouldn't have scored at all. One thing that you can see quite nakedly though is how the games play, and hell, maybe that's something you could do with other games from now on, at least ones that have some sort of squad-based competitive goal as opposed to, like, a platform or something. It is interesting to see how a computer goes about completing a seemingly straightforward task without affecting it in any way. Try it out for yourself. Maybe it'll change the way that you play football games in the future, and it'll make you a better player. Okay, I mean, it probably won't. Almost definitely won't, in fact. But at least it won't be in any way stressful. Bye for now. For this video, I would like to thank Adam Schaefer, Andrew Dalton, Andy Capt, Audie Sawley, Chris Wilkins, Conformist, Dustin Cooper, Gary Pinkett, George Newton, Guaf and Blackpool, Ian Roberts, James Id, James Loveridge, Jason Goy, Jason Leach, Jason Stevens, Johan Eriksson, John Scott, Keith Barlow, L. O'Brien, Lee Norris, ManagerSim.net, Mark Heslop, Mark Johnston, Mark Whittington, Martin Pataki, Nanette McCrone, Olaf Albin, Pete Morris, Filter Brog, Potter Margell, Rachel Maxwell, Romeo, Sean Zoltek, Seth Robinson, Simon Gulliver, Taylor Armand, Twisted Squote, and V. Shardy.